Welcome back to the Maritime CEO Tech Leader Series powered by Ocean Technologies Group. It's a series sponsored by our friends Duolog, where we assess how shipping is set for technological transformation. Today's episode takes us around the world as we try and identify how the business of chartering is changing. It's a topic we've been discussing a lot on Splash in recent months. Now we're going to start today in Hong Kong to get this perspective from a ship owner, ultimately the end user of the tech we'll be talking about uh, in the next few minutes. Tabitha Logan runs chartering for Dry Bulk owner Asia Maritime Pacific, and also rather handily, she is the co-founder of the Captain's Table, a maritime startup pitch competition, which Splash is very proud to support, and we're looking forward to the 2020 edition of. So, Tabitha, thank you very much for joining us. Now, pre-COVID-19, we were hearing so much about how new chartering platforms were coming online this year, going to revolutionize the industry, and a repeated theme in this this particular series that we've been doing with Duolog has been how coronavirus has sped up digitalization across every facet of shipping. So the question I'm going to kick off with you is, is this the year that chartering really goes digital? Hi, Sam. Thanks so much for inviting me to be a part of this. Um, Yeah, I think that's a really interesting question, actually. I think if you polled the majority of the shipping industry today, I think everyone would be in agreement that COVID has really fast-tracked the digitalization of our industry. I think you're correct. It was a hot topic. We've been talking about this for the last couple of years. And there have definitely been some leaders of the pack in the industry, I would say, you know, companies that were actively taking an interest, whether it was developing their own platforms internally, um, whether it was partnering with some startups, perhaps, to trial some platforms, or even, you know, we've seen the onset of a lot of uh, CVCs, you know, shipping companies that are setting up accelerator programs to access this kind of talent and these these new startups. And then I think, you know, the other side of it have been some companies that have sort of taken a more wait and see approach and see what everyone else is doing. Now, I think you can't sort of take that approach. I think everybody has to be paying close attention to this. And COVID-19 has really proved that. I think from a chartering perspective and from a ship owning perspective, we've seen that some industry players have really been able to be quite agile and adapt quite well to the situation even from flag state and class, you know, they've been quite good at getting things online and and sort of moving to the digital world and other sort of areas of the industry have been a bit slower. In terms of chartering, there were exactly, as you say, there were already some platforms that are out there, um, platforms that are utilizing AI and big data to really create these chartering marketplaces. And they've been really interesting. I think Singapore is a good example of that. And I think there has been some adoption there. Um, but there has also been, you know, some hesitation from the industry because we are slightly old fashioned. Everyone likes to do it their own way, work with their own brokers. They've had relationships for some time. But quite frankly, I mean, that's fine. But the reality is, I think you're going to get left behind if you take that approach, because a lot of it is moving online and it's, it's moving so quickly. And having these platforms, you can actually make decisions very, very quickly. And there are some newcomers coming into the market as well. You know, we did a a trial with Shipnext as well, which is a a new sort of chartering marketplace. And they've got some access to so much data that really means that you're covering sort of the whole entire market very quickly compared to if, you know, on a daily basis, you're picking up the phone and speaking to various ship brokers and everything else. So having that data quickly and a lot of it, I think, will give you an edge. Whether that means it's going to happen in by the end of the year, uh, I still don't think so. I think it depends, I guess, on on the size of the ship owner you are, you know, the access to um, capital that you have, because some of these platforms do obviously cost money. And it sort of depends on on your view of whether you think that there's a good return on investment there. But I certainly think it's important for the industry and for ship owners to be engaging with these platforms. But a lot of them will give you free trials for a couple of weeks, so you can actually test it out before committing. And that's so important because then you can also be part of the feedback process as well and say, you know, actually, this works as a feature, this feature was not necessary. And they really are interested in hearing that feedback. So I think it's also important for us. That neatly brings me on to my next question. What would you like to see tech-wise still to be developed to make your chartering life easier? What, what the, what's on your wish list? Look, we are fairly lucky. There are obviously a lot of platforms that already exist to make our lives as chartering managers and as ship owner much easier, for example, you know, email passing software 
as a chartering manager, you get thousands of emails a day. Just having software that can consolidate that and sort it for you is very useful. Every chartering department has a voyage calculator soft software system or access to weather analytics or lay time calculations. My particular side and my area of interest is actually around voyage optimization software, voyage optimization platforms or voyage planning platforms. I think this is something I've taken a keen interest in for our company this year. I think everybody knows that ship owning companies tend to be quite siloed. Um, you know, you have an operations department, you have a chartering department and a technical department, but the information tends not to flow freely between those three departments, not because anyone's not wanting to share it, but it's just old fashioned system that's been set up. As a chartering manager, I want to have access to all the data that the tech team has as well and the ops team has as well to be able to make informed real time decisions about my ship. Some ship owning companies even outsource their technical management as well. As a chartering manager, if I fix a voyage, I want to be able to know how my ship is performing. Is she over consuming? Is she under consuming? Um, what the weather conditions are like? And being able to make those decisions and have a platform where I can see that data, you know, look at how the engine's performing and, and basically evaluate it and, and see the same information that perhaps tech is seeing and ops are seeing and talk to them. I can make real time decisions about my ship and whether she slows down, whether she speeds up. And in the process, I mean, just saving a couple of metric tons a day or saving $200 on a, or improving your TCE by a couple of $100. Over the year, over X amount of vessels, this adds up to a huge amount of savings. So really what I guess I'm looking for is a voyage optimization solution, which creates a smart ship, a ship that I can really take all the information we have to hand, whether it's what your lake can is, whether it's the weather conditions, the condition of the ship, and I can adjust that in real time. So I think it used to be that you would fix a ship and you would give a voyage instruction of full speed or eco speed. But now we know it's just really not as black and white as that. You know, there are different speeds and consumptions you can go out to meet, make a certain date, but then, then you might want to also optimize your TCE. And so I've been looking at various platforms like this. We did a trial with Nautilus Labs that was really interesting as well. They've got some great uh, software solutions and also hardware solutions for putting sort of equipment on board your ship. You know, they're not the only ones doing it. There are, I think, um, BMVGLs doing uh, something in this space and Rena and Wattsilla, and I'm sure there are probably plenty of others. But I think for me, this is a really interesting space because you can really add value and I think you can improve the overall uh, earnings on your ships using this type of software. So thanks for that, Tabitha. Let's now take this chartering journey to Athens and to uh, the co-founder of Vesselbot, Athanasia. Thank you for joining us. You are behind the development of uh, one of the best regarded, most advanced digital solutions platforms using AI and big data, hopefully to try and change the face of shipping. Now, let's look more long-term. This is perhaps a more tricky question for you, but how do you envisage a future chartering department at a, at a ship-owning organization that's truly adopted all the technology that's out there? How different would it be to what is the general chartering department of today? Hi, Sam. Thank you very much for the invitation and for giving me the opportunity to present my views. The main difference, uh, in my opinion, uh, will be that uh, automation will uh, uh, change the, the way that we are doing the everyday, their everyday tasks. Uh, they will be able to um, optimize the, their jobs and uh, gain uh, more money because they will be able to make um, optimal decisions. Um, we will be able to be very fast because of the digital tools that they will be able to use. Actually, they are currently, they are able to use, not in the future, but let's uh, envisage uh, the big picture uh, that every company will work in this way mm -hmm. and the most important thing uh, for um, the sea level executives is that they will be able to uh, measure their return on investment in a positive way let's now move to the uk and uh, Jenna, you're joining us from Shipper Max. Thanks very much for uh, coming to the show. From what you've heard from the two previous 
speakers. Uh, I mean, you you must be seeing a sort of a greater willingness among the shipping community to adopt new digital ways of doing their business all of a sudden this year? I mean, with the spread of coronavirus, is that something you're seeing in the short term? Yeah, I, th- I think depending on the technology, I think there are some technologies where there has this the kind of crisis has accelerated things. So, for example, any system where you had it on prem before um, starts to become a real problem as people work remotely. So email systems um, said enough, for example, seen companies move super quick because on prem or hybrid solution, uh, i.e. via Citrix or something is, is not working out so well and it's really causing the problems. I would say there's another strand of things where some technologies are maybe not slowing down, but there is less capacity to try things that don't result in an obvious ROI because, um, let's be frank, no one has the, the money to experiment right now. So I think efficiency driving, cloud driving, uh, kind of winning, but um, maybe more experimental things, um, not so much. I totally agree. Uh, shipping always needs to see this ROI to take the plunge in general. Let's just go more long term. How do you envisage 10 years from now how a chartering department might work if it's uh, adopted all the flash new technology that's doing the rounds? I mean, is it, is it something that would be uh, completely different to what we're, lo- you know, if we were to walk into a ship owner's chartering department today, 10 years from now, we wouldn't recognize it? I don't think you're going to see something that is wildly unrecognizable. I think you're still going to need a human to make those judgment calls, those intelligent decisions that a machine just can't do. I think what you will see is a lot less manual administration um, across the board. So, you know, the first wave of that has, has been going on for already over a decade of kind of processing emails and not having to, to write everything out. And what we're seeing trend is integrating systems so you have kind of little best of breed systems and you're integrating all that data so that maybe the chartering manager has that at their fingertips, but they're still the ones using and interpreting and driving those decisions. So yes, probably some big IT architectural changes, but you're, it's, still, it's still kind of chartering. <laughs> Let's finish this episode staying in the UK and uh, it's great to have probably shipping's most famous futurist joining us, Kate Adamson from Future Nautics. So Kate, from everything you've heard so far, let's just go a bit big picture on this. You know, how is tech going to make shipping and indeed chartering more transparent or is this just pie in the sky talk? When you, uh, as we've been talking about the the future of of chartering you know how digitalization is going to affect chartering i think actually that's kind of the wrong question because when you look at what technology should be doing you you know you should know me by now you should know you shouldn't ask me questions like this in all seriousness uh, back about six or seven years ago uh, future nautics did a a big study with some big owners and ship managers to try and understand if we could quantify the cross business value of investing in, in broadband and they couldn't do it and they probably still couldn't really do it And this speaks to the question of how's chartering going to change? You know, the reason we talk about shipping being behind is because where shipping is behind is in understanding that actually the entire operation needs to be optimized. And what shipping is, is deeply, deeply siloed. And that's nothing to do with technology. That's to do with culture. And I think Tabitha mentioned it, you know, in in her piece, she was saying, oh, uh, you know, I'm interested in voyage optimization software. I guarantee you there'll be someone in her technical department saying, what the hell does she think she's doing coming and sticking her nose into technical? Yeah, bless them. And everybody will be the same because everyone has their turf. Mm-hmm. And what a lot of organizations outside shipping realized a long time ago was that you optimize everything, that you need cross-functional, agile, transparent operations and teams. Mm-hmm. And they use digitalization to do that. What shipping has been doing is bringing in digitalization to reinforce their silos and looking at the technology in a siloed way. And that actually isn't going to work. It's not going to give you the value that you expect. And actually, I do know, uh, you know, there are a number of operators where they've brought in software that people don't use. So well, the reason that digital transformation has struggled seriously in shipping is not because people couldn't understand digital. It's because there are cultural 
changes, cultural transformations that need to take place. And actually, that is a lot, lot harder than spending money on a piece of software. That's what's important. And I think what this speaks to, again, is ecosystems. The business itself is an ecosystem. And if you can't get ecosystem within your own business, that means you're going to struggle mightily to do it on an industry or a sector level, which is what you're going to need to do in the future. What COVID-19 has really shown people is that we have these supply chains which are not really resilient enough. And it's funny, isn't it? Because for years, shipping has been whinging about nobody knowing what it does or taking any notice of it. Well, it's got its wish. Everybody has now seen that we have these massive global supply chains and they're falling over. And the first thing people are saying is, well, this is unacceptable. So poor old shipping gets this moment in the spotlight just to the point where everyone says, right, we're not in this globalization business any longer. You know, there's going to be some really major impacts. It's going to accelerate a lot of the trends that people like me and many others in shipping, you know, Christopher Rex, Danish Ship Finance, many others have been talking about for a long time that we're seeing a reverse globalization, more localization. This is going to be really important. And the other thing is resilience, because we focus, digitization is focused very much on rationalization and efficiency. But it also means that we now lack resilience. So when we talk about adopting technology, it's not enough to say, oh, well, there's a little piece of software here that we could buy. That needs to be resilient. It needs to be interoperable with the rest of your organization and other people's organizations in your ecosystem. And this is where we come to security. I think you mentioned in Splash a couple of days ago, 400% increase in cyber attacks during the, the lockdown. Well, that's happening everywhere, not just in shipping. And these are really, really serious things. And we're beginning to realize how important, you know, the resilience of these supply chains are and security is at the base of that. I think what we're undoubtedly seeing as we go forward is a bifurcation of the Internet. That has been on the cards for a long time. We're already seeing certain jurisdictions, uh, you know, begin to close off, wall off their digital systems, which is a nightmare for Industry 4.0, which needs interoperability. So for global operations, for multinational organizations, for shipping, actually the choice of digital platform is going to become increasingly important. I do foresee a time where if you are part of a certain digital platform, you may not have access to certain features or to certain organizations or operations that are in certain parts of the world. I'm looking at a bifurcation really east and west here. And this is incredibly important for the kind of investments that need to be made. And this is where it comes back to, you know, all this about startups. Startups are lovely, but 70% of startups fail. And I don't think a lot of shipping really understands what a money sink startups are. You've got to have very deep pockets and real opportunities to actually spend lots and lots of money on startups. And the problem with startups is that they aren't resilient. They can come and go in a heartbeat. So you may save some money you know, investing in something with a startup, but if it's not resilient and it's not interoperable with other things, then that it could be a serious strategic error. So, I mean, I work with Oracle, for example, you know, obviously everybody's heard of Oracle. Um, you know, my view is that you're going to be far better off looking at a robust system that you can then work with to actually develop the features that you need. And they may be across technical, they may be across charting. It's interesting, Tabitha mentioning, you know, you've got the charting guys, then you've got DMVGL doing stuff. Exactly. What you really need is something that pulls all that together. And, and that's where the silos are. So I think that the security is another really important part. And I've mentioned investment. Look, this is going to be a massive, massive downturn. And what digitization has been doing so far is digitizing existing business processes. What it hasn't been doing is encouraging people to reimagine the business. And I think what COVID-19 should do is actually be that catalyst. And unfortunately, you know, they say you should never waste a good crisis. You know, unfortunately, there are a lot of people in big trouble before COVID-19 hit. And if there was ever an opportunity to really start rethinking things, this is it. But I do think that to get bogged down in you know, whether people are adopting this technology or that technology in the short term is a bit of a, it's a, bit of a misnomer. What leaders strategically need to be doing is saying, do we culturally have the infrastructure that we need to adopt these technologies? Can we actually use these on a cross-business basis? And are we just trying to digitize something that is not fit for purpose any longer? And I think the agile approach, cross-functional teams, highly transparent, that's what you're going to see in our customers. 
that's where our customers are going. And actually, if you want to really work as part of their ecosystems, that's the kind of thinking uh, that you're going to need. Thank you very much indeed, Kate. Uh, that was brilliant. A good way to finish. Um, for all kind of tech developments, do check out the tech uh, pages on Splash. Uh, we'll be back next week with another episode of the Maritime CEO Tech Leader Series. In the meantime, everyone stay sane and sanitized. Thanks.